Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Jeff Sloss. I'm the controls marketing manager for Zoller. We really appreciate you joining in today. We've got a good crowd and we're going to have a pivot panel introduction webinar. Before we get started, just a couple little housekeeping items. Note the email address, webinars at zoller.com. We are going to take questions throughout the webinar and try to answer those for you. What, uh, what we're going to talk about here, of course, is Pivot. And the reason I'm the one talking to you about it is because I'm the controls marketing manager. And I just celebrated my 10th year anniversary here at Zoller. And before I came to Zoller, I was in the financial markets on a trading desk for a handful of years. And then I ran a pumps uh, sales and service company in Chicago for about 18 years and then came here to Zoller. So I do have a background in the, in the controls and the connectivity aspect of the pump world. And since we've been here, we've been developing and releasing products that Zoller makes that are electronics. So for battery backup systems and APAC alarms, that, those kinds of items. Uh, we developed the whole Z-Control backend and all the interfaces and apps. So that is all part of uh, the, the projects that I work on. And Pivot is now our biggest and I guess some would say best project to date. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, this is the Pivot intro webinar, and what we're going to cover today is we're going to compare a little bit Pivot to Pivot Pro versus the current panels that we sell now. We're going to talk about some Pivot functionality. We're going to go to a video feed at one point, and I'm going to show you some of what I think are the most crucial features. We're not going to go, we're not going to do a deep dive into features, but I'm going to show you some that I think are really important. We're going to review what sales literature and other assets are available for you as you are out there in the sales world. We're going to look at a, the pivot timeline and all the different panels that we've already introduced and what's coming. And then, as I mentioned before, we'll do a Q&A. So you might, the first question you might ask yourself is why, why would Zoller go build its own panels? We've had a great vendor for literally decades. And, you know, what, what, what would be behind taking on quite a project like this? And really, it goes to one of Zoller's overall philosophies, which is the vertical integration of our business. So, you know, we're, we're not just a pump company. We're making controls. We're making the basins. We're, we do a lot of extra manufacturing that, that other companies don't. And we try to do more and more of it ourselves, which is kind of the opposite of what's going on in a lot of industry these days. So we're taking things on instead of farming things out. Main reason we do this is we, we control our destiny a little better. We, we can control the, pro the product design, but then that product's future, we're autonomous. And especially when you get into control panels like the Pivot, there's a lot of work that goes into the, the design of, of not just the circuit board, but also the design of the firmware. There's a lot of innovative processes that happen, and we just want to protect those innovations a little bit better. So that's the why. So to set the stage a little bit, I don't know who in the audience is very familiar with our panels and who isn't, but this is these two panels that you see on your screen are really the two most common panels we sell. Uh, single phase duplex on the left there and single phase simplex on the right. These are great panels. They're very basic. They, there's just not a lot of features built in. You've got the basic requirements for what you need in a control panel. They're very reliable. They're very good quality, but, but again, they're very basic. When they aren't basic, and a lot of times your need or for the application or the requirement on the spec, there's something above and beyond that basic feature that's included. And what happens then is one of these sheets is required. Now, if, you, if you've never seen one of these sheets, that means somebody else is filling it out for you because it has to be filled out when there's a panel that has some option added. So obviously when an option is added or options are added, and that whole sheet is options, that's what, this, that's what these are. These are how you modify those panels. So as you add options, part number changes and the list price changes and your wait time changes. So that's just the way it's done now. It's pretty common, but we wanted to change things up a little bit. So the pivot concept is to take all those options, not all of them, but the vast majority of them, the ones that most people care about, and could we do this and make them all standard? That, that was kind of the challenge before we even really got going. So that's what we ended up with. All those, the more common options, I'd say probably, and I'm just throwing a number out here, but maybe 70% of the things listed on that, on that prior sheet, they're just built in now. So what does that do? The, net, the, the effect of that is that we, we reduce the item numbers that we make for sale to you. 
So instead of having 3,600 different panels available to sell to you, we can cover the breadth of our, of our pumps and what our pumps need with about 150 panels. So when you lower the number of products that are needed to cover, to provide the same coverage, we now give you as the rep or as the wholesaler or as the contractor, the ability to stock those panels. Cause it's not an unknown now what you need on your shelf. Now you know that you know generally these 10 panels are gonna cover everything I do in my world of the pump industry. So it gives that ability to pretty much every part of the supply chain. We're gonna solve some common field problems and we're gonna go into this a little bit more later, but we've got the ability to solve problems with firmware and that technology built into the processor, the microchip. We're gonna maintain price. So when you saw that 10-1044, for example, the price of that 10-1044 you'd think would go way up when it's got a, a matching pivot with all the extra features. And in fact, that's not true. We've kept the price on most panels. It's, it's almost the same. There's a few that are less and a few that are more, but very, very close. We're, we're going to keep that panel compact, but the field requirement or the customer requirement from you guys that we heard over and over, you got to have enough room to get your hands in there and do the field wiring. And we understand that. So the way the way the panels are designed and the way that they lay out is to allow for that. And this is going to make a little bit more sense later when we look at some features, but prioritize running pumps. Not that old panels didn't prioritize running pumps, but they, they weren't able to in the same way that we're able to now. And we'll, we'll look a little bit more at what that means in a few minutes. So here's pivot single phase duplex on the left and a pivot pro three phase duplex on the right. And this, this slide is just to kind of show you the basic differences between the two configurations. So on the left with pivot, pivot only comes in single phase, no three phase for pivot, at least nothing planned. You know, if something happens in the future, we'll let you know, but we hear enough input that we need a three phase pivot, uh, we'll look at that. But right now it's single phase only. You'll notice on the interface, there's no LCD like there is on the pivot. There's no Z control jack on the circuit board. So you cannot take a Wi-Fi wi gateway and plug it into the pivot like you can on Pivot Pro. When you need to change settings, it's a little less convenient because you don't have that LCD with the, with the button menu. You can still change settings, but you have to do it using a thumb drive and plugging it into the USB. In addition to that, there's five jumper pins on the circuit board that allow you to change the five most common things that we think people are going to want to change or, or, or choose between. So there's five things that are easy to change, and then the rest of the configuration changes or setting changes can be done with a USB. On the right, you've got the Pivot Pro, so you've got single phase or three phase. You've got the LCD menu, which has the buttons, and that there's all kinds of uh, screens on that that you can navigate through and make, make setting changes that are ideal for your application. The Pivot Pro has a few more features than Pivot, like a seal fail input and the thermal inputs for for the pumps that are so equipped. There's a RJ45 jack that allows you to plug in a, a Cat5 cable and, and plug that into one of our Wi-Fi gateways sold separately that then gets the whole thing online. And then setting changes and viewing counters and things like that is real simple to do because you have the LCD screen. You can also still look on Z control or you can take a thumb drive, put it in the USB and extract data to the USB. You can do that in either one, Pivot or Pivot Pro. So notice at the bottom, the, the part numbers, or what we call item numbers for Pivot and Pivot Pro, they're five digits dash four digits instead of 10 dash four digits. So the reason we're doing that is those five digits before the dash are somewhat meaningful, not somewhat, they, they, they correspond directly to this chart. So instead of a 10 dash 1044, which is a meaningless number, it's just a, it was just the next number in line sequentially. And that's why it was assigned to that panel. With pivot, you can see, and this is, this is an FM available to the reps, available really to anybody, FM 3297 in the upper right corner. You can see if it's a pivot, it's going to start with one, two, or three, pivot pro, pivot pro plus, and pivot. And then you see simplex, duplex, simplex reversing, duplex reversing, triple X or more, and a zero is kind of always the wild card. So as you work your way left to right, you can see the five different X's that denote or represent the five digits before the dash. So you can see electrical, you can see the amps, and you can see the type of enclosure. 
And then you've got a dash and then four, usually it's just a sequential numbering starting with 0001. Eventually when we have time dose and intrinsically safe, the first digit will represent those items as well. So hopefully that will make it a lot easier to maybe give a control panel's item number a little bit of a sniff test or a little second look where you can verify it's the right panel. So in other words, if you have a three-phase duplex application and you notice that your control panel that's coming in starts with a three, you know that that's wrong right off the bat because a pivot doesn't come in three-phase. Or if you see that the second digit is a one, which means simplex, you know that's not going to be a duplex panel, so it won't be any good for your for your application. So it just gives you a better way to, to double check and, and provide some meaning. The inside of the door has the schematic, has the UL listing, the FCC statement. Uh, we've got a device ID label for the Z, for Z control for the Pivot Pro models. And then in the lower right there, you'll see the, the manufacturing sticker, which has all the description of the panel, including the item number. The upper right is a QR code. The idea behind that is we know that people are going to walk up and there's not going to be a schematic or there's not going to be instructions and they're seeing a pivot panel for the first time. They can scan that QR code, go to a page on our website that has all the resources for them. That label in the picture there just has two lines at the bottom where we're prompting people for, to write down the pump model numbers that are installed in the pit. We've actually expanded this label and it now will prompt people to write down the electrical voltage that was measured, the phase, the amps that were measured when the pump after the pumps were installed, and the pump model number still. And it it just prompts people for that information to try to remind them to, to write that down to make it maybe a little easier for the next guy that comes along. This represents a typical schematic. There's a lot of different schematics for Pivot and Pivot Pro, and we'll have even more as more I as more types of pivot control panels are added. This is what the Pivot Pro interface looks like up a little bit closer up. Again, you can use a USB to program any setting changes or to pull data off. Actually, that USB slot with the thumb drive is also what you would use if we ever had to update firmware. So it gives a lot of ability to keep that panel relevant and to change it. I mentioned bulk changing via the USB. What I mean by that is if you have if you have a whole neighborhood of panels and you really want them to be all the same, you can have one thumb drive that has all the settings the way you want them. And as you insert that into a, into a Pivot or Pivot Pro, it makes that Pivot have the settings exactly the way you want them. So it's a simple way to make sure everything's the same. So Pivot and Pivot Pro technology that is being put forth to you through these panels, they accomplish some things here. And, and we're gonna go through four slides, data recording, diagnostics and alarms, configurability, and problem solving. We're not gonna dwell on these. There's going to be a second webinar that will get more into more detail of each of these, but for now, we'll kind of just mention, we'll go through and mention them all. You can feel free to ask us questions via the email, or maybe there's a chat a question that you wanna enter. But we're gonna record data. These panels record data. So elapsed time meters, cycle counters. No longer are these things optional. They're, they're just built in standard. You don't have to pay extra for them. There's a time limit on turning the, the pumps on using hand on the HOA. There's a lot more of the data being recorded online at Z-Control, so zcontrolcloud.com. Oops, that says dot .control, that's wrong, it's dot .com. Um, but there's a lot more data being recorded there that will be available to anybody that's putting panels up online. Second category is diagnostics and alarms. Obviously you've got a high water alarm, that's pretty typical, right? But you also have leaving the HOA and off. Somebody accidentally leaves and leaves it in off. There's a continuous run alarm. There's the alarms for bad overload, seal fails, thermals, float switch errors, like a, like a logical fault. Those are all alarms and diagnostics that are built right in. You're not paying extra for them. Configurability. On a duplex panel, you can make that panel be a lead lag panel, a, a simplex, a duplex, an alternating. You can make it be three or four float. You can determine the float order, meaning stop lead lag high or stop lead high lag. You can configure whether the horn and the globe are active versus latching. And then there's a bunch of other behavioral modifications that you can either use your thumb drive to program on a pivot, or you can just use the, the buttons in the LCD menu to program on a pivot pro.
problem solving what i mean by that is you know over the years we've heard a lot of feedback from guys in the field the guys in the field are saying how come we have to still put up with this or that or the other thing why can't panels be better and 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 help us resolve those issues so we listened to all those things over the years and addressed i think everything at least that we knew about i just give you a couple examples here so latched alarms like a high water alarm on our on the panels that we've sold for decades a high water could could occur but then went away the float went back down and nobody knew nothing latched the globe and the alarm didn't latch so somebody comes home they never they've got a problem there's a pump problem but they don't even know they have a problem because nothing latches so that's been resolved sometimes you're in the field and you want to you've got a pump down and you just want to turn this duplex panel into a simplex panel because it's going to operate as a simplex for a while and you don't want to create extra alarms for the homeowner you want the switches to be correct on the old panels that took some rewiring took about 15 20 minutes to do and you had to know what you were doing and on a pivot panel you it takes about six seconds to make a, a pivot pro turn a duplex into a simplex actually a pivot or pivot pro and the third thing there is don't leave them guessing let's say that somebody did know that there was a high water alarm and they came out but the reason for the high water alarm was maybe bad floats, float switches. That is not apparent when you walk up to most traditional panels out in the field. On this panel, and we'll, we'll look at this in a second, there's all kinds of indicators telling you very plainly that float two was a, is in fault condition. There's something wrong with float two. It's very specific. It even on the Pivot Pro, it even spells it out in plain English on the, on the screen. So, there's a lot of things to help the field guys overcome these these problems that they've been dealing with for decades all right so what what we're going to do is i'm going to switch to a video feed we're going to look at the panel just for a minute what we're going to do is go over a couple of the the really important features a lot of times i'll go through the whole entire menu and that takes an hour or more to do but we're going to focus on two things the the handoff auto right here and we're going to look at some float logic um, those two things alone are probably worth the price of admission to, to know how these things are to an advantage for you guys out in the field. Before I do that, I'm just going to point out the main components inside this panel. So we, on the outside, we have the toggle switch for the silence and reset. We've got a horn over here, a globe on top, obviously the inside of the door. This is what we refer to as the interface. LCD screen, buttons for the menu. Pump one HOA, pump two HOA, two fuses, a Z control LED. <clears throat> and then we have on the HOA, we've got auto, off, and hand. There's a seal fail adjustment screw right there where you'd where you'd set your where you'd set your seal fail. You've got a pump run LED. And then outside these boxes, you've got the float switches. So stop, lead, lag, high water, and system ready. So the first thing I want to show you, oh, and then the inside of the panel, sorry. You've got your contactors, you've got your overloads. This is a three-phase panel, so you've got overloads. If this was a single-phase panel, you'd have circuit breakers right here. But in a three-phase, you've got the transformer. Transformer just takes the three-phase power, makes it into single-phase power, and that's how you power up the alarm circuit and the control circuit. I think that's about it. Okay. So on the HOAs, the way this works, when you press the button one time, I know it's probably hard to see on the video, but the green LED on auto went to a red LED on service off. So pump one is now off. Now in four hours, by default, it's gonna go into alarm. And that's a reminder, hey, you left, the, you left pump one off. So the idea here is to give you an alarm before you get an alarm from the homeowner that there's a high water condition and, and there's flooding or whatever else going on. This is just a reminder that there's a, that you've left this off. So in a duplex situation, you might turn them both off. And in, again, in four hours, you're going to get you're going to get that alarm. That four hours is completely adjustable, just like any other time limit or or counter that I tell you. Um, they're all adjustable, um, uh, with a with a couple exceptions. <clears throat> but that's how that service off works. Now. The other thing you can do is you're going to, if you're going to be gone, let's say pump one went bad and it's going to take 
you know, a week or something before you're going to get back there. What you want to do then is you've got a service off and right here on the label, it says how to put it in permanent off. And really all you do is you hold that button for six seconds. Again, I don't know if this shows up on the, on the video feed or not, but that red LED now is blinking. So on purpose, I held this for six seconds, the LED blinks. This is now in permanent off and there will be no alarm after four hours or any amount of hours. So the idea here is I had to intentionally do that. I know I'm not gonna get an alarm and I'm gonna leave. So, and then when I come back, I just take it out of uh, service off or out of off by just toggling it back to the auto. Now, what if I wanna run the pump in hand? Hopefully you could hear the, the, the contactor uh, click in or pull in. That'll run for five minutes and turn off. If you need it to run it again, you just turn it back on. Five minutes is adjustable. I put it back in auto. So that's the, that's the HOA. We nicknamed it a smart HOA. It does some things that um, are gonna hopefully help the guys out in the field. Now, the single most important feature, I think, of Pivot and Pivot Pro, of any Pivot, is the float logic. You have the ability to go back to standard logic, the old school logic, but by default, all pivots have what we call a smart float logic. And that smart float logic, what we're doing is we're taking all the inputs of floats and, and uh, voltage and whether or not a contactor pulls in and all these things, and we're making decisions. And how that manifests itself is, um, well, let me set up a scenario. If you had, if this wasn't a pivot, just a standard panel and you've got your lift station over there and it's got a couple big pumps in it. Everything works great. Even the panel's working good. Pumps are working good. Your rail system's good. Your switches are good, except for the stop float. If you have a stop float problem, let's say it gets stuck and that is the most common or likely one to get stuck because it's the lowest one. It's down in the, in the, in the muck. Um, if that were to get stuck, and then you've got one of your other floats that comes up. The only way that the, that the uh, technician or the building owner is gonna know about it is eventually the water gets high enough to trigger a high water alarm. That's standard panels. And we've always thought that that was a real big negative and what can we do to overcome that? So let's, let's go through that scenario. Well, first of all, this is, this is just regular operation, right? A, a stop float comes up. You can see a stop float LED come on there. Lead pump, come, lead float comes up, pump runs, pump turns off. But the scenario I outlined, outlined a second ago is our, our stop float got stuck. So let's do that. Now, normally with the other panels, the first time we know about it is high water alarm. But here's what's gonna happen with pivot. Stop floats stuck off, lead float comes up. I silence the alarm there. Alarm's gonna sound, globe is on. I have a lead float in green, but I've got a stop float flashing red. And I've got a screen here that says alarm float one, or uh, yeah, alarm float one. So the pump's running, but what's gonna happen here? These are narrow, narrow angle floats. So they, they kind of go on here and off here, on here, off here. That's kind of the, the angle that they operate at. And we didn't want pumps to short cycle. Uh, and then you end up ruining pumps because float one is, the first float is bad. So what we did instead, float is off, and then we just add a 10 second runtime. So you'll, you'll hear probably five more seconds that contactor is gonna click off. Okay, so there, now it's off. We've retained our alarms. People know what's going on. Screen says what it is. LEDs are saying what it is. I, sh I show up as a technician. It's all spelled out very clearly for me. I can reset my alarm here. And now everything's back to normal. And I know I've got to replace a bad flow. Uh, one, note to, one note about that. If, when the computer says, oh, float one or float two or something is bad, it's going to now disregard that float switch until you reset it. Once you reset it, you said, I think everything's good. Let's go back to normal operating running. But until that time, whichever float was found to have a fault is now being disregarded in the, in the float sequence, logical sequence. 
So let's say uh, both these floats are bad and we only have our top float. Of course, we have an alarm, we've got our globe. We have our lag float is green, but our lead and stop floats are flashing red, letting us know that both these floats appear to have an issue. And our screen is toggling between alarm float one and alarm float two. When we lower this one, we know we've got a little bit more depth, so we're running the pump for 20 seconds instead of 10. So hopefully that all kind of made sense. Uh, there's also float logic involved for one of the other floats getting stuck or, or getting float, uh, stuck up instead of stuck down. So uh, there's accommodations made. We can't go into all the details today. The contactor just pulled in. I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. Uh, didn't pull in, I'm sorry. It turned off. And that's what we wanted to cover with the video feed. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. I always try to make sense, even though I'm talking fast and going through it fast. So what about Z-Control? You can still monitor a pivot panel using Z-Control. That pivot panel just is not connected to Z-Control, so you're not connected right through to the panel itself. With Pivot Pro, you are connected to the panel itself. You're able to change settings. You're able to silence that panel remotely and see all of its statuses and counters and everything else. You would just need a Wi-Fi gateway. You can see the part number there, 90002-0001. But what can you do with Pivot? So both Pivot and Pivot Pro have two sets of contacts. You've got a set of contacts for alarms. All the different alarms that we've talked about will change the state of those dry contacts, also known as auxiliary contacts. People call them different things. But those dry contacts, and they're form C, so you can use them as, as normally open or you can use them as normally closed. When an alarm occurs, those change contacts, and if you have a pair of wires on those contacts running into, let's say, an APAC, a Wi-Fi APAC that, that talks to the cloud, you can monitor a pivot panel or a pivot pro with the input on an APAC just by monitoring those dry contacts, the alarm dry contacts. So what that would look like in, in the cloud is you're looking at an APAC that has a closure or an open on that input. You're not like Pivot Pro where you're seeing the panel itself. You're just, you're able to monitor it. You're able to set up the notifications for email and text and push notification. Hopefully that's clear. Sometimes that's confusing to people until they it, it really sinks in, but you can monitor both. You can have full connectivity to P Pivot Pro. The, the other set of dry contacts on, on all the panels is there's uh, contacts built right into the contactor itself. And some specs will call that a pump run dry contact. So that is included in all the panels. With Z-Control, you can remotely monitor the panel, you can change some settings, and you can receive alerts. So as far as the sales sheets and assets that are available to you, this is our, our regular sales sheet uh, pivot on the, on the front side with lots of explanation of all the features. And then it's got Pivot Pro, single phase and three phase on the backside, highlighting some additional features. You have a cross-reference chart. So all the panels, all the Pivot and Pivot Pro panels that we currently sell are on this cross-reference chart. This list will get longer and longer as time goes on. We'll also have a panel selection guide that will come out as soon as we launch our next set of panels. You'll notice there's a, a version of this sheet that also has list prices on it. And when you go down the list prices, you'll notice that they correspond very closely to the panel that they're replacing, as I mentioned earlier. On the back side of that sheet is your comparison chart. So I know it's hard to read on the slide here, but those are basically all the features and options that a panel could have. And then the gray column is the old panels we sold the blue column is pivot. You can kind of, I think you can tell where the check marks stop and the X's begin. So the, that's how many features are included on pivot. And then pivot pro, you can see the check marks go down, I don't know, another dozen or so. And then pivot pro, which we haven't talked about yet, goes even further and then has options available. And that's the big idea behind pivot pro plus. So all of the literature available, Again, if you go to that QR code, which I'm gonna show you in a second, so get your phones ready. If you want that QR code, you can take a picture of it. But when you have the QR code and go to that page on our website, these are all the documents you're gonna see, including the, the basic installation instructions. There's a quick start guide, guide now for both panels. That controls numbering scheme is even there. 
and there'll be additional things added. But that's a nice thing for a guy that doesn't know the panel at all to walk up and be able to have access to all that right away with his phone through the QR code. There's the QR code. I'll leave it there for three more seconds just so you can take a picture of it. It is also the same QR code inside the door panel. So we are at the end of the PowerPoint and video part of our presentation here. Pivot your thinking, everything included is better than having options. I'm gonna see what kind of questions we may have had. All right, we have a couple other items to cover here. You can come on campus here and visit the Center for Excellence. The CFE, as we call it, is a 6,000 square foot facility. It has a very large classroom in the front for group lectures and a, and a really big demo room for hands-on learning in the back with all kinds of different training stations. And our CFE staff can tailor all those courses for, for you, even if you're coming by yourself or bringing a big group, whether you're beginners or, or seasoned professionals, we can make that visit be very valuable. Now, if you can't come to us, you can, you can invite our people out to you using the uh, Zoller University on the road product trailer. I know there's uh, one available for reps to use, and then there's another one that our own staff takes around to, to do visits. Those trailers are stocked with latest products, demos, swag, things like that. You can get that scheduled by contacting your rep, your, your Zoller rep. You can schedule a visit from that product trailer, or you can book a trip to come here and visit the CFE and get some training. All right, a couple questions. The panels do always come without floats, whether they're single phase or three phase. And the reason for that is that was the input we got. People almost rather buy the, the floats separately because there are gonna be more and more float options as time goes on. We're gonna have float list switch options and different types of floats, different configurations of floats. You might only want three or four. So there's different kits available that you can purchase that way. Will there be a main disconnect? We, we are looking into that. Um, a lot of people achieve that in a side panel. So we kind of have to weigh volume versus whether it's gonna fit in our panel, having a big main disconnect. A lot of times that's in conjunction with an inner door. We are looking at that. So we don't have that yet. And then somebody asked the advantage between the three and the four floats. So just real briefly, we recommend three floats. Now we realize that there are applications where four floats are either beneficial or required and we get that. So we make the panels very adaptable to however it is, whatever the requirement is or whatever the most beneficial setup is. Three float floats, what we would recommend is you've obviously got a stop float, a lead float, and then your lag and high are tied together. The way we put the panel out by default is it's set up as a four float, but with three and four jumper together. So in, this, in essence, you'd use three floats. And if you wanted to use the fourth float, all you have to do is pull the jumper out. So that's how it's set up by default from the factory. Now, if you're gonna use four floats, and we realize there's exceptions to this rule, but we would highly recommend that the float order goes stop, lead, high, lag. It used to be customary that you always put it stop, lead, lag, high. But the problem with that thinking is that you're never gonna get a high water alarm until both pumps have not done their job. Now, we realize there's some applications where that's what's desired because you expect the lag pump to run once in a while, and, and that's okay. That's why we made it adjustable. You can use it any way you want. You can use the, the pivot panels. They're very flexible in, in these in all the various applications. It doesn't look like we have any other additional questions, so we're gonna wrap things up. So thanks so much for joining us today. And of course, you can always ask us any questions you may have. Once again, thanks, have a great rest of your day.